Secret, thank you very much. You welcomed us in your beautiful home. I just want to start with, you are one of the well-known writers all over the world and especially in Israel. What made you a writer? Is it just because you want to uh, make connection with the readers or just because of your, your ego, you want, to be, be, you want to be known? Well, I, I began writing during my compulsory army service. In Israel, you have to serve in the army between, uh, for three years when you were 18. And for me, the army was very difficult because I felt that my entire individuality was erased. I had to wear uniforms, I had to cut my hair, they would address me by my rank, not by my name. I wasn't allowed to say what I think. And for me, writing was a way uh, to preserve my individuality, uh, even in these kind of oppressive conditions. So that's why you wanted to write, uh, just show yourself, and maybe you want to escape something. It's just you want. I, to I wrote primarily for myself because I wanted to remind myself who I am. When you're in the army and they give you orders and you don't sleep at night, at some stage you don't even know what you want. So by writing, it was a way to encourage myself to, tell, to, to confess like what I feel, what I want, what I yearn for. So let's go to your family. In one of your interviews, you just said your family is actually a microcosmos of Israel. What do you mean by that? Well, my parents were both Holocaust survivors. Uh, and the, both of them belonged to, uh, to the moderate, I would say, right wing. You know, my father was in the Irgun, uh, uh, who fought the British and later became the Likud movement in Israel. Uh, my, and we have, we have three siblings. The oldest, my, my brother, is an anti-Zionist anarchist who is basically against uh, uh, the two-state solution and against uh, uh, the regime here. And he also started the legalized marijuana movement in Israel. Uh, my sister became very religious. She's a religious Jew. Uh, she has 11 children and more than 30 grandchildren at the age of 58. And I'm a liberal left-winger. So in our family, you can find all the political affiliations, all the extremities that you can find in the Israeli society. And on the family level, it works because we disagree ideologically, politically, but uh, we get along. On the country level, it's a little bit more complicated. And also, um, being simple, using simple words, simple sentences. Before the interview, you told me that you're just communicating with your illness, asthma, to writing simple. What do you mean by that, actually? I grew up in asthmatic, and when you have asthma attack, your sentences are very short, and uh, you have to communicate in a very precise and, and concise way. Uh, so people will understand you if you need your inhaler, if you need them to call an ambulance. And I think that there is something about my aesthetic of writing is that of somebody under a, a, an asthma attack. The feeling is that reality is uh, very urgent and that you have a limited amount of words to express it. I think also the, the, me writing in a short form has to do with the fact that in my training I, I was a mathematician. I learned mathematics. And in mathematics, they always appreciate most the shortest proof. If you can make, make a proof that is very short and very accessible, then you're considered brilliant. If it's long and uh, encumbering, you know it's less brilliant. I think that in humanities, it's exactly the opposite. If you want to write a PhD, it has to be 500 pages long. But I think that the aesthetics of logics and mathematics together with the asthma created the, the aesthetics of my writing. I guess it's time to talk about Palestinian Israeli issue. So you're an Israeli writer and you're a well known one internationally. When people ask you about Palestine Israeli issue, how do you feel? Are you bothered to be asked? I'm not bothered at all to be asked. I think it's the most legitimate uh, uh, question. You know, I think that when you live in a, in a region that is so conflicted and violent that it's only natural that people will ask for your opinion. I must say that, you know, I, I, I feel that sometimes I don't have all the answers, but the way that I see the situation in the Middle East, and I actually in my latest uh, uh, story collection, I write about it. I think that uh, uh, both uh, Israelis, Jews and Palestinians, uh, they suffered a lot, you know, during modern time and before that, you know, the Jews they suffered from Spanish Inquisition to Holocaust to uh, pogroms in Russia, the Palestinians probably uh, are the group of uh, uh, or the people in the Middle East who had suffered the most, you know, from every country uh, 
who were here, the, who was here, committed an atrocity against them. And I often say that if they make a Eurovision of victims, then Israel and Palestine will be in the first places, for sure. And I think that there is something about this uh, sensation of, of victimhood that makes uh, uh, both sides think that they are the only victims around and that uh, uh, it, it gives them some kind of a priori right to be violent because they suffered so much. And they, also the moment that you see yourself as a victim, you kind of block yourself to the other side's pain because you don't want them to be more victims than you. And I think that the, this conflict between two victims is the most horrible one. You know, I think that if, uh, if Palestine had to fight with Sweden and Israel had to fight with Norway, there would already be peace because the other side <laughs> would give some, some more reasonable thought. But here in the Middle East, it's basically, it's, it's, some, it's impossible to even have a dialogue. You know, when, as a left-winger, when I talk with many people here and I talk about the suffering of Palestinians, by the second sentence, they immediately say, oh, they suffer, and what about the boys that was hurt in a, in a terrorist attack? And I say to them, but one does not negate another. If there is a family in Gaza that her, their house was destroyed or the family was killed, it doesn't matter at all, you know, if an Israeli boy was killed in, in a terrorist attack. A pain is a pain, you know. But when you come to these professional victims, the, f the first thing they do will be to, to uh, concentrate on, on their pain and to ignore the other side's pain. Well, Edgar Keret had much more to say about his writing and Israeli-Palestinian politics. So part two of that interview in our next episode of Showcase.